Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becky from Bags by Becky Mac. In today's tutorial, I am proud to introduce the Alicia Bag by Kimba's Designs. I was asked to be a tester and to make this video by her and I feel very honored. So let's go over a few things of this bag. It has lots of pockets, all right? We're gonna start off with, it has a back pocket, okay? I used this red uh, pebble-like um, vinyl. I'm gonna put it up to the camera, hope the glare doesn't get it, but it's just gorgeous. And with the black hardware, absolutely beautiful. So then we open it up and inside it has a slip pocket, a divider pocket, and a zipper pocket. It fits very nice. There is no saggy bottom in this. It's just, it's a well-structured well structured bag. Um, very structured, okay. And I use uh, sew-in Peltex for the um, interfacing and she'll describe to you in the pattern how to place it and then just make sure that you sew very close to the edges, okay. Um, I wouldn't recommend uh, Decaville Heavy. It doesn't seem to stay very well from the way you have to sew the bag, all right. So Peltex seems to do really well and then what I did with the Peltex is I used a lot of double-sided tape. She does recommend glue. I can't use glue because of my birds. So I used a lot of double-sided tape and you will see that, but it came out beautiful. The double-sided tape held very well. It's that hyper stick, okay? I will have all the links for the double-sided tape, for the Peltex, for the hardware that I used in the description box below. Then this one is more springy and I use gold hardware. Um, it has a different uh, handle uh, connector than this one does because that's why this one lays down a little different all right it has this one here where this one has more of an arch um, again a zipper in the back excuse my birds they're letting you know they're here uh, again we have a, a slip pocket divider pocket and a uh, zipper pocket bottom fits very well uh, put purse feet on there now I use magnetic snap because um, I didn't have any thumb locks. I would definitely recommend a thumb lock now that I've made these bags because it will help lock this down easier. I'm kind of struggling a little bit with the magnetic. I can get it to go, but you know, that thumb lock really makes a difference. Uh, if I do make another one, which I probably will because I love this pattern, I will definitely make sure I have some thumb locks available. Um, I don't know what else to say about this bag except for it's gorgeous and I... I wish her the best on this. I hope you like this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you do. If you uh, have any comments or questions, leave them in the description box below. I will have a link to the pattern for this as usual. And uh, um, I thank you very much and let's get started. Okay, the pieces you're going to need for this bag are two flaps. Um, this is for your exterior. I chose this today. Um, there will be markings that she'll have you put in the pattern and then this is for the handle Okay, and then I just squared this off and then took a, a Piece of I had a little round cardboard and I just followed around the curve um, This is a turnout Right sides together and then you turn it out. I'm kind of debating about that. I might just do um, an open edge but we'll have to see, okay? And then I'm also going to use Peltex for my interfacing. And I have markings on here because we want to be able to do this for the flap to make it real sturdy. And I might stick a piece of chipboard. If I do, we'll do that together. But um, that's some of the interfacing for that. Okay, so there's the two flaps. And then you're gonna need two side pieces again with your markings top and she has the measurements okay here is your handle and there will be markings on everything and if I don't have it marked when I get to that piece we will mark it together to show you so but there's your handle and then this will be for your divided pocket there's four pockets there's a back pocket on the outside a zipper pocket on the inside a slip pocket and also a divider pocket and these two pieces are for the divider pocket. Okay, here is your trim for your slip pocket. 
you need two top lining panels. Again, there's markings on it, so you wanna do that. Um, here is your base. A lot of times on my base, I put the interfacing on it. Uh, she suggests to wait till the end, and then don't forget to put your placement for your feet, okay? You're also going to need a zipper overlay, and this will be for the inside zipper pocket. Uh, two strap connectors, and then your two exterior pieces. Alrighty, and again, markings. Okay, and then for the lining, I'm using a waterproof canvas, and you're gonna need a zipper overlay facing. That will be for the outside back pocket. All right, you need one of those. And then you need an inner pocket, a slip pocket, and then a back pocket. Okay, so three of those. Everything's in the pattern. And then for the uh, divider pocket, you'll notice one shorter than the other. That's okay, don't panic. You didn't cut it wrong, but you'll need one for each of those. And then your two lining pieces. All right, so we've got that. There's a lot of pieces, but these bags are well worth it. Okay, and then here is the interfacing. You need two for your side panels. And uh, I'm gonna use double-sided tape. Yes, it's a lot, but uh, I can't use the glue. I have birds and they wouldn't like me very much. Uh, two pieces for the exterior front and back panel. And then here's for your base. Okay, not a lot of interfacing, but that's it there. And then for my hardware, okay, need zipper tape. Um, mine's on order. It's all I have right now, but it's coming today, so I'm excited. So you need zipper tape. I'm going to choose to use this half moon um, connector for the front of the bag. Here's my chain. If you want to make a crossbody, um, she has a description how to do it in the pattern. I'm choosing to use a chain. You need uh, feet, purse feet, and uh, two double ring, uh, two D rings. And then I'm going to use this for my top connector for the handle. I don't have a uh, arch connector, so I chose. Well, let's light, light, live it up a little bit, and I'm going to try these and see how they work. Okay, so I'm gonna get those. And then of course some rivets. And then you need um, three zipper pulls, plus your zipper tape. So that's all the pieces that uh, we need for this pattern. Um, like I said, I'll go through it step by step, uh, how to do it as I usually do. And then when I change something though, I'll let you know, okay? Um, let's get started. Okay, the next step is to get your interfacing onto your front and back panel. Um, as you can tell, like I said, I'm going to be using double-sided tape, but I was able to actually order one inch, so um, it won't take up so much of my half. Um, so here is my front piece, and this is going to be your back piece. And there is a pattern uh, that's for the cutout, okay? And you're going to place it, um, after you cut it out, you're going to place it on the back, uh, center it, okay, so <laughs> I just crack up about this tape. So you're going to center it, and then you're going to do the cutout before you put it on, okay. It's either a lot of glue or a lot of tape, so whichever works. <laughs> All right, so then we're going to Center it and make sure you have your seam allowance um, on the sides. I always mark my centers. It's very sticky tape. Ah. So give me a minute here. We're going to line it up. Line it underneath that line that she has provided in the pattern. And then press it down or glue it down. Again, she has those instructions as well. And then you're going to have this as your back panel. Okay. Then you need your zipper face facing and you want to make your marks like she has and then line down the center. Okay. And then we're going to place this um, in the measurements that she has. If I can find my ruler. So you want to find your center and you can clip the top of this. It's not going to hurt anything. 
Except for I'm going to trim this up a little bit. Uh, it wasn't exactly a good cut, so I want my center to be perfect. All right, so we're going to make a little, little snip. So we have our center. And then, guess what? More double-sided tape. Um, this is for me to do it because I don't, you know, it sticks to everything. All righty. And I'm going to put just one eighth inch. And I'm going to remove this. So if you have another way, like if you want to use pins, I don't like pinning my waterproof canvas because it's waterproof. And if you poke a hole in it, to me, it won't become waterproof. Okay, so then we'll take the tape backing off. All right, and then we're gonna make our measurement down from the center. I don't like to use my ruler. Okay, and the center, line it up. Line your center here. Wrong sides or right sides together kind of, or no, it's actually wrong side up and wrong side up. Wait a minute. Oops, my bad. Anyways, all this is correct on how to prepare this. Flip it over. Find your center. Uh, well, I thought I was so perfect. Darn. Yeah, just too funny. All right, so anyways, then you get your measurement on the right side. Then you place this in your center mark on right sides together. Okay. And this will be my center mark. Okay. All right. So now that's there. And then you'll know that you'll feel it. That's right in the center of everything, which is cool. Now we're going to go to the sewing machine and just sew the edges, the long edges. Not there. Not on the sides. She just said to sew here and here. And uh, I'm just going to do that because you guys can do that on your own too. It's just from this point to this point, back stitch, this point to this point, front, back stitch at both ends. And then I'll meet you back here at the table. Okay, so I sewed both lines and now we are going to, we're going to snip down the center line to that point and then go to the corners of each one. Do not snip your threads, okay? So we're just going to go all the way through. And we're gonna go to the corner or to that point and then right to the corner without snipping your threads. Okay, right to that corner. And then I did remove that double-sided tape gently, you know, so I removed that because we're gonna have to turn this. Um, it's the only way to, I found to hold it, but you have to be careful with some vinyls, it will actually rip off the print. And um, that's not a good thing when you're in the middle of a bag. So test your vinyl to make sure it can handle having that double-sided tape pull away from it okay so we're going to go right to the corner there and it's nice to have precision tip scissors right to the corner get them off my fingers and then we're going to turn it and you can press it if you want finger press it iron press it again um i found using a little bit of double-sided tape and working with it just pull it right up there, finger press it, okay, and then I'm going to put some double-sided tape on the back of this and work with that, and then I will be right back with you to the next step. Also, you can tuck these in, okay, so don't be afraid, just tuck those back in there. See how that kind of popped out? And then you can kind of finger press that in like that because once we put the zipper in then we're going to sew across that 
All right, so I'm gonna put the double-sided tape on there and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I finished that and I used double-sided tape to hold the facing, the zipper facing back and that looks really nice. Okay, so now we're gonna to move to uh, making our zipper. So you're going to need the back zipper piece, your zipper tape. She has the measurements for everything in the pattern. Um, I'm not putting on my zipper yet because I made my normal usual mark to line it up. So right side up on that zipper panel. And then your zipper tape is also upside right. We're gonna clip it. A lot of you already know how to do all this. So we're going to take it to the sewing machine and we're gonna baste it on. And then when you're done with that basting, you're gonna bring this one up and put the right side to the wrong side of the zipper. And you're going to line up your zipper and your short or your edges, okay? Again, clipping them. and uh, baste it down, and then you can put your zipper pull on. So I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and take care of that and get that sewed on, and then I'll be right back with you, okay? Okay, so I have my zipper on, and what I always do for me, because of the waterproof canvas, can be very stiff, is I always put a piece Again, you do not have to do this because then I end up removing it. I might not have to on this one because we're not cutting this uh, bottom here. So anyways, I do that and make sure your zipper is heading towards the left. Pull this down to straighten it out. Fold it at that little seam and press down. Okay, and that gives you a nice flat area to work with because now we're going to attach it to here. So again, you're gonna put double-sided tape. I'm using that eighth inch. I seem to use a lot of this. It just fits in nicer place, fits nicely in places. Okay, get your zipper pull out of the way. Put it up on top. And the way that we're gonna sew this is a little different. I have done this on other bags. Um, and she has you do the same way that we're doing this for the inside zipper pocket. But um, I'm gonna do that differently. We'll see as I get there. So, okay, so now we're going to take off the zipper tape backing and might be hopefully not hard to see but your facing should line up with the edges of your pocket so that's what you want to use for your placement of your zipper and then bring it on up center your zipper and then gently push down get the first one get your zipper pull out of the way <laughs> this material is really stiff, plus it has the interfacing on it. And then just let that drop down. Again, get your zipper pull out of the way. And press that down. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to raise this back pocket. That's why we'll have to take, but definitely have to take that tape off. Okay. Because we got to raise this pocket up. Oops. Hang on. I don't want that one. I want... No, I don't want that one. Hang on. <laughs> I want underneath. Okay. Just give me a second. So I just take that just gently. Make sure you get the right piece. As you can see, I was stumbling a little bit, but that's okay. That's all right. So we'll take that off of there. 
Again, this is how I do it, you know. This is what I find works, gives me the, the results I want. And we just, you can see, just kind of pull that out of there, okay, and then press that down again. Because as you can see, when I flip it over, it pushes that up. Okay, it pushes up. All right, so we're going to go to the sewing machine, and now what we're going to do is we're just going to sew the bottom. But you have to make sure that you have this pocket out of the way. So make sure the pocket is up, and you're going to go over, and you're going to sew from here to here. No back stitching. Pull your threads through. And then I'd recommend coming back and starting your needle about a quarter inch from here, because when we come back, we'll flip the pocket down, and then we're going to sew from that point up to here, top stitch, and then come down to this point. So you want to go about a quarter inch past, enough to catch your little edges, okay, and then enough to line your stitches up. So I'm going to take you over to the sewing machine, and then we're going to do this together. Okay, so remember, pocket up. Um, because we're going to sew that flat. My stitches are going to be on a six because that's my top stitching. And give me a minute to line it up because I want to make sure, remember to hold your threads on a cylinder arm. I want to make sure that I'm coming down right at about a quarter so my stitches line up. Okay. And do not back stitch. And try to keep your zipper out of the way. Well, this material is kind of thick, so uh, I gotta get over here. There we go. All right. The narrow foot it really works better with for the zipper, so you don't have to move it out of the way so much. Okay, now we're just going to let the threads come through, leave them long because you want to tie them off. Okay, and then we're going to lower the pocket. All right, I'll tie my threads later. Okay, so now lower your pocket. Well, actually, we should tie our threads because then we'll know. Where is it? Okay, I don't hope you can see. But we're going to just pull our threads through. Okay and tie both ends. I'm gonna leave mine long and then maybe tape them down. All right, so now see, and then we're gonna start, bring our needle down and start and come up and go around so let me pull this one through. It just takes a little practice. You might want to even back it up a little bit more. It just depends. Oops, sorry. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to flip the pocket down and leave our threads long again. And then hold our threads. And I'm sorry, my arm's in the way and it's going to take me a minute. I'm going to scoot that out of the way. And I'm going to bring my needle down. If I can get this knee pad to work. Bring my needle down where the hole is, line it up best I can, hold your thread, come across, okay, I'm going to do 
Let me see how that looks. Oh, that looks pretty good. Okay. So now we're going to sew across. Move that out of the way just a little bit. Okay. I didn't get that as tight as I wanted it there, but it's going to be okay. Making sure pocket is still down. All right. And then I did a half a stitch. So it doesn't look like I need much. And it should just meet right up with that one. Let's see what we got. It's close. I'm going to do and then back it up a little bit and line it up and hit it and then pull it up and there we go. So I did hit it, leave the threads long and tie them off. Okay, and then um, I'm going to tie them off, but then what we're going to do is flip this over and then we're going to sew our pockets closed. Okay, so you got to just be careful. Don't pull up your, your facing here. Pull up the zipper flip this down and sew your pocket from the zipper down to the edge closed and then that will be done so i'll get that done and then we'll go to our next step okay our next step is to put our feet and our male part of the magnetic whatever you're using if you're using a thumb lock then she has a placement on her pattern piece and she has the instructions in her pattern. Um, however, I'm going to wait a few steps till I get closer to the flap because I'm using a different uh, closure and I want to make sure it's accurate. But um, what we're going to do here is I cut some uh, Peltex and I made my hole in the markings. Okay. And because I'm using um, screw in ones, I made a hole. If you use the one that you could do the slit, um, then do that. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of some glue on the top. I'm not using heavy stuff, just some tacky, because I don't want to take a chance of, um, you need to test the glues on your material to make sure you know how it's going to react. But that's basically all purpose, so I'm just using that to give it a little bit of stickiness. And screw them on in there. And so now we have our four feet. Okay, so then the next step is going to get our base, which we were just putting our feet on. Okay, that's not going to go there right now. And you're going to get your panel and right sides together, because again, we're going to put the interfacing on the base later. Okay, and we're going to clip our base to one of our uh, bottom of the main exterior and we're going to sew it at the seam allowance okay oh i don't have that lined up over here crazy girl there we go just off a of hair all righty okay so we're going to sew that Again, at the seam allowance, and then we're going to flip it and top stitch. You want to bring your seam allowance towards the uh, base, and then we're going to go and do the same thing on this piece. Okay, so I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. Okay, I also <clears throat> forgot to mention, put some duct tape over your uh, feet post. Uh, my stitch length is at five. I'm sewing at the seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and the end. And then here we go. Don't forget to hold your threads.
And I forgot to mention, once you sew up your side seams, you can cut that extra zipper off. A lot of you already know that without being told, but just in case not, just cut off the extra part of the zipper. We don't need it anymore. Okay, so there that is. Kind of got folded under a little bit. There we go. Not pretty. Well, it's going to be pretty together. Trim our threads, and now we are going to do the exact same thing. Make sure that when you, you have your top, because you want that, you know, at the top here. So make sure you get your bearings right, and then put the bottom to the bottom. And same way. So at seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and end, and then change your stitches and uh, top stitch for a different stitch length there. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna get this done and then we're gonna go to our next step. Okay, uh, the next is we're going to work on our handle piece. Um, I had just folded that back. Um, that's our connector, okay? So you wanna make sure that you have B on this side, A on this side, and then, like I said, I've just folded that down and I'm going to line, just kind of take it maybe about halfway through. Okay, because these are the two lines we need to, to mark. All right. And then you might want to take a, a couple of clips just to hold it in place. Because we need to transfer those markings. And this is the way I do it. Again, everybody has their way of doing things. Okay, so I'm just going to line up my ruler and draw the first line and line up my other side because this is our folding marks. That's what this is. Okay. And then just kind of move it back again if you want. Sometimes I give too much detail. Sometimes I do it harder. I don't know. This works for me. And we always want to do us, right? You do you. All right. We'll just line that up. And make your mark. I don't need that anymore. Oh. Oh. Finish marking this. And we're going to put, guess what? Double sided tape. Okay, so we've got that done there. So now I'm going to get quarter inch. And we're going to um, A. All right, so we're going to put the double sided tape on A, on the A side. I'm almost out of my quarter inch. Don't fear, I have backup. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so then we're going to do that. And we're going to fold that up to that first line. And if you need, if your material is kind of thick like mine, you might have to clip it. Okay. So we've got that. Then we're going to get our clips or our rings that we're going to use, whatever you choose to use. And like I said, I'm going to use this one because then we will be putting double sided tape on this side of B and you might want to put, oh, I'm so close. Kind of like the bobbin. <laughs> That's how much I have left. That's pretty darn good. Um, then I'm going to get my eight and just put a small piece at each end. This is just to hold it down till we sew it, okay? And then just a small piece. 
because you want your freedom if you have this taped you want your you want this to be free to move around but you need this to hold down so then what you're going to do is take your um, connector take off the tape and bring it over to where this is just barely at the edge where it lines up okay and then press it down do that with the other side bring your connector in kind of light it up at the edge because you want that freedom a little bit to move you don't want it to be pinned down because if you pull this in too tight you're pulling your connector in too tight so you want to make sure your connectors right at the edge and then bring this down and fold it on that line or at least just bring it in okay there we go see how i did that and then press it down then you're going to take b remove the double-sided tape eventually here okay and then you're going to bring this up to that line okay just right to that line going over and trying to keep that piece even okay and double check make sure this all lines up okay and that's how it should look okay then one more step make sure is then we're going to fold this up and then you're going to sew right down that line okay so I don't know if these short clips are going to work. So pull it up. That would be A to B. So it's not going to be even. That's okay. All right. Because that's going to be the underneath. And just pull it up tight. Well, not too tight. See how I did that? And it kind of, I need to remove that. There we go. Bring it up without squishing your pieces. All right. And that might need to be loosened just a little bit. There we go. I might have that a little too tight. There. Okay. Yeah, see, I had it too tight. We don't want it like that. That'll look terrible. So you just want to fold it right to that edge. So it doesn't fold over your connector. I guess you can clip either way. So then what I have to do is undo this. And because it's sticking together, it's that kind of material. And then just loosen it up, make sure it's all measured, you know, type thing, get that eye on it. That's how we learn. And I had it too tight, so I'm going to loosen it up a little bit and bring it down. Okay, sticking. All right, so we've got those, and then we're going to take it over the sewing machine, and we're going to sew from this end to that end. Okay, trick though, I don't can't get that close uh, with these. I might be able to more with this one than I did with my other one. But if if it, you can't get your foot too close, lay your foot down, start where you can, leave your threads long, and then you can, I, I've done it in a couple bags, you can hand stitch through to continue your top stitching, okay? And the same with this. When you come down to the end, if you can't run your foot all the way down, then leave your threads long and then just do a couple of hand stitch. Pull your needle through, to, you know, two needle. And um, I might, I'll see how it goes. I might be able to do with this one, but I don't want to tear it up. So um, maybe I'll just do it the way I'm talking to show you ladies how to do that one little step. It really, I know it might take a little longer, a little more work, but it's worth it to get that perfect top stitch. 
All right, so let's meet over at the sewing machine. Okay, so I have it all ready to go. Um, my stitch length is at six for top stitching, and I am going to go past the handle where my back foot starts. Um, I'm not going to back stitch. If you can go over, it looks like you can. If you use this kind, I'll show you the arch, but um, I'm not going to because I don't want it to tear up my material. And here we go. I'm going to get as close as I can. Okay, so I got pretty close to that one, as you can see, but I'm going to leave my threads long and I'm still going to take a needle and bring it through there. I have a couple stitches here. Like I said, I could probably have done it, didn't want to take a chance. And so I'm going to sew probably three or four stitches. Um, I will show you that at the other. We'll go back to the table. But there's your handle. Cute. All right, so we'll meet back at the table. Okay, so what you're going to need is two needles, one on either end of the thread. And sometimes it gets sticky, so have your cotton swab or your alcohol swab ready because you're going through some double-sided tape. And we're going to thread this and you want to have the needle on both sides and you want to go on the top and it, it takes a little finesse kind of find it but then gently and I lost my needle but that's okay gently push through to make sure you keep it level <clears throat> you don't want your needle coming over here or your needle coming over there so then you just kind of line it up like I said, it takes a little time, but it's it's well worth it. Okay, and then you're gonna push that through. And then you're going to thread the other needle that fell off. Helps to have the right end. And then go back through that same hole you just came out of. And again, watch where you're going through on the other side. So poke it in gently. And let's pull this one down a little bit. Oops, this one, there we go. And you wanna come back out and you wanna come through that same hole. So just take your time. Make sure you line up again. <clears throat> Excuse me. In that same hole. I have such a glare with this material and the light, really a bad glare, so I do apologize. But I think you ladies get the gist of it. So I'm gonna finish this up off of camera. Plus I think I need a drink. <clears throat> and then see, it just come through that hole. You might need a thimble. I don't mind doing this. I like the, the results I get, so it's worth it for me. Okay, and then you're gonna pull, once you get both of them done, you're gonna pull it kind of tight so it makes it look like that stitch a sewing machine just did. Okay, so see, that's two stitches I just did. Alrighty, so I'm gonna finish that up and then like I said, on this side, I'm just going to take my, my thread and go down through that hole through the back side, have my threads come out here and tie them off. All right, so I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I finished my handle and I tied it off. And this is that um, 
connector she was talking about, the arch. And in the pattern piece, it has the mark that you would be marking for on the top of one of your flaps now. And what you would probably do is like I've done, if you have these, is you just take it and center it, and then you can press it down and make an indentation and make your mark. Um, I'm doing it differently, of course. I made my mark and then I cut my Decaville heavy that I'm gonna need and um, I measured what I needed for these here. So I'm gonna poke my holes through. Again, every person's different. This is how I did these. I'm gonna poke a hole all the way through. I know the glare is terrible, I apologize. Okay, but the material's so pretty. Okay, so I poked the hole through there. And then it says to use Decaville Heavy because some of those ones that I bought did not come with washers. These did. So um, anyways, so I'm gonna make sure your handle's upright. You wanna make sure that your, okay, your top stitching, you have your underneath, underneath, and towards the back of the flap, okay? So then this will go on here and I'm gonna put my Decaville heavy and hopefully a washer and a screw. And this might take me a few minutes, I apologize. I need my screwdriver and see if I can get it all lined up. I think what I'll do is first poke it through the hole, then make sure I'm lined up there. The Deckville Heavy might be too much because it is thick material. If I can get the screw to pop through, there we go. Nope, I'm not gonna use the Decaville Heavy. So we're gonna take that off of there. It came with these, so that was nice. Okay, so put that there. Make sure that's at the back. Put the screw through. A lot of times we don't show you all this. We get it all done and it looks so perfect. We don't show you the struggles that we go through just to get it there. All right, so lightly turn and then turn that in there. Lightly screw that in. Hopefully I don't lose any other screws. Okay, get that, put it through. And then line up. That's why I just put it in very lightly so I can do this. Put that in there. And then I'm going to put some duct tape over it. Tighten that down. Oh, yeah, that's going to be really cute on there. Okay, so I'm going to do the next one off camera, and uh, then we're going to start working on the rest of our flap. Okay, so I got both of them on, and what I did is I ended up taking this one back out and using the holes that I had already punched, and I brought the sides together, right sides together, and I copied the holes through there for this side so it's even, okay? And then now I screwed them both in and I put duct tape over them. All right, so now what we're gonna do is, she has a marking in the pattern to cut off that much there, okay? And so even though you cut the whole thing, because it depends on which flap you wanna use. So on your back flap, because what's gonna happen is once this is turned, this top part is going to be taped and then glued down like that, okay? So in order for that to work, we need to take our back flap and cut off this first line. And it should be at the um, measurements that she gave you in the pattern. 
All right, so we're gonna cut that off and then we're gonna put the right sides together and you wanna make sure your strap's out of the way. Now, it looks like you can't line it up, but use this corner and this corner and then you can line that up, okay? And we're gonna clip all the way around and then I'm gonna meet you over at the sewing machine so we can sew this down. And then you're gonna put your interfacing in I'm going to put my interfacing on before I uh, flip it because again, I'm taping it down. So I wanna do it before I flip it around so the glue or the tape sticks. But you can follow her directions and how to put your interfacing if you're using glue. All right, so I'm gonna continue on and then I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. Okay, my stitches are at five. And like I said, try to lay your handle down and you don't want to sew the top. You're just going to sew the sides all the way around the bottom up to the other side. Okay, so let me get this maneuvered where I need it. And it'd be better if you did sew on the back because then you can see your stitches and your curve. Okay, and you can back stitch if you want. Hold your threads. Okay, so we got that all done. I'm gonna clip our threads, and then we are going to clip our corners, like she says in the directions. Make some clips to help it when you turn it back around. And then I'm going to go put my interfacing on this first, and then I'm gonna flip it. So I'll meet you back at the table. Okay, so I kind of checked on it again, and. She actually doesn't put any glue or recommend any glue or tape on this. So we're going to hold off, but I'm going to take my pinking shears and I'm going to trim this down. It's great if you have them. And then just cut all the way around. Okay. Stay away from your stitches, of course. love these things and then this should give you a good curve I didn't trim all the way I just want to make sure I just trim from corner to kind of to corner because we can always turn this back around if I needed to so okay so now we're gonna Turn our, fl our flap inside out, or inside right, however. Well, you don't want interfacing in it now anyway, so I'm glad that was better. Okay, I'm gonna just work everything out. Oop, the handle's on the wrong side. Get over here, there you go. out you can use your little you know chopstick or something to help poke out the corners hopefully they're more rounded than corners again I am so sorry about the glare all right 
I gotta get these handles where they're supposed to be. Handle. There we go. Okay. Now we can work on the getting that out. Yeah, I might trim that down a little bit. I didn't trim up there. There we go. Put your thumb in there. Let's get that rounded corner. Really got to work it. There's one. Okay, I'm going to get this side done. stitch there we go and then we're going to oh that looks pretty okay yep nice rounded corners work that seam a little bit more I should get my little tool uh, okay so we're just gonna poke that out a little bit more Without poking a hole through it. I usually use this flat end here and go across the seam. Okay. I think that's as gonna be as good as that's gonna get. And let's try this one over here and see if there's any more. Alright, that's the same thing. About as good as that's gonna get. Alright, so we've got that done. And then what we're gonna do now is make sure, because this is where this will fold, so you want to make sure where you put your fold in, okay? And we're going to insert this. I know it fits. <laughs> Just got to get it in there. All right. So now we've got that in there and the other bag I made it was a little long and then when you've sold this closed it ends up creating a bubble and it doesn't fold right so I'm gonna trim this down a little bit it feels like it's going right where it needs to be but I don't like it that tight okay so there's that gives it nice structure Oof. All right, and then you have your creases. See, the crease is gonna be off, because to me that's still too high, and I know it's all the way down there. Yeah, you can see, I hope. It's all the way down there. So, I'm gonna pull that back out, and I'm going to trim around the curb. I don't want to lose this measurement, okay? So I'm just gonna take a little bit off the edge, and then I'm gonna come around the corner and take a little bit off the bottom. About a quarter inch, that's my call. You don't have to, if your yours fits better, great. And then just straight up. Okay, so again, it's gonna fold. So we want this to go in this way. And her measurements are right. Again, it's my way I like it to fit. I want a little loose. Okay, so say that fits in there better. It's in the seam. Okay. And it has a little more room to work. Okay, so then what we're going to do is take some double-sided tape. We're going to put it over here. And then we're going to fold this over. We are going to top stitch the sides and the bottom. Do not sew the top. Okay, because that's where we're going to sew the top after we fold it onto the main panels. Okay, so I'm going to put some double-sided tape, fold that down, and I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. Okay, so I have my interfacing in there. I folded this down with the double-sided tape. Um, oh, it's a little uneven. Let me 
we go. All right, uh, stitch length is at six, and you want to just top stitch right on the edge. Okay, keeping your handles out of the way, go around the corner and go back to this corner. Do not touch the, the top. All right, let me move these out of the way. And uh, I'm going to tie my threads in the center, so you can back stitch if you want, but I'm not going to. Okay, I'm leaving my threads long, and there we go, all the way around, it's really good. Okay, so now the next step is to put it on the main panel, so we're going to go back over at the table and do that. Okay, so now we've got that done, we're going to put some double-sided tape on the back. And she has, we want to get our, our main uh, panel, and with the one with the zipper, we want to measure a line from the top edge, and you can use this, and just slightly go over it to make your line, and then you want to find your center. Okay, so if you want, I have my little center mark there, and we're going to place the flap. You can put, like I said, double-sided tape. I hope you can see this. I know the glare is horrible, and I'm going to find right on that line. Still not quite there yet. I gotta go this way with it. Sorry. There's my center mark. There's my center mark. Make sure it's right on the line. And then push it down into place. Okay. And then we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch one stitch at the seam allowance and then she wants you to do another stitch at another seam allowance so now we're going to take it over to the machine and get that done okay i haven't forgotten that i still need to add my mail strap or magnet to the other front but there's a lot of material here so take your time and i'm going to come in this way fold my threads bring my needle down And here we go. Oh, and my stitch length is still at six. Okay, again, leaving your threads long. And so now I'm gonna go over the table and then I'm gonna get my measurement for my male magnetic snap. Okay, so I added my bag tag as well. Uh, make sure uh, you do it underneath the pocket so you don't cut off your pocket and put holes in it, okay? 
So add your bag tag. I'm putting it here. You can put it wherever you want. I also have my magnetic snap. It was a, a little bit of a, a fight because now I had to change direction because the other one would not fit. It was, uh, my material's too thick through here. So I'm changing to using this one. So I worked on that. <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, put the st strap connectors in and you wanna put your interfacing in. Again, she does have all this in the, the pattern, but I'm just gonna explain it. You take your two strap connectors, a lot of you know, meet it in the middle, put tape, sew down the sides. And uh, we're gonna take my cutter and my mat and you want to make sure that you cut a little bit within the first, a little bit within the line and shorten it at the other end, okay? Because you kind of want this, uh, the strap connector to fit tight. So, and you can keep, you know, it's better to be short and add than it is long and you can't shorten it. So then you're gonna go through the front and I feel like I'm gonna have to add a little bit more. Let's go back this way and yeah, just a little bit more. Okay. So then we're going to go through the front with the wrong side up and find your slit. And we're going to stick that in the hole, hopefully. I'm trying to go through a lot of thicknesses here. I might not have that cut enough. I apologize. So I'm going to... Kind of saw. Okay. Make sure my finger's out of the way. This thing is very sharp. It's a new tool I found. <clears throat> um, scrapbookers use it a lot. All right, so back to that again. So push that through. And then pull it through the other side. Takes a little finagling, I'm sorry. You can always just fast forward through everything you know. Okay, and then we're going to pull hopefully that through eventually. I guess I made it pretty tight. <laughs> All right, we're almost there. There we go. All right, and then you're going to just pull that through. And... Okay, and then we're gonna go over to the machine and we're gonna sew from this stitch to that stitch. <clears throat> Pardon me. This stitch to that stitch um, and stay within there, okay? Cause you don't wanna go over. You wanna just stay within your stitches. If you can see that with that glare, there we go. Right in between there, okay? And I would say it looks like about half an inch from the yeah, about a half an inch. We'll, we'll try that. And so I'm going to do that to both of them. I'm going to sew. And then you're going to put your D-rings on there. And then once you sew it, you put your D-ring on. Then you're going to take it and tuck it back in. Pull it down through here. And then you're going to put your rivet in it. Okay? So I'm going to get those two done. And uh, then we'll go to our next step. Okay, I got uh, my side panels done. I have my D-rings on, have my rivets set. Okay, um, I never really get this even and there's not really a marking in the pattern. So I kind of estimated if you wanna pull them through before you put the rivet in and kind of before you sew it down just to see how it's gonna work out, that'd be fine. It's a lot of work too, but anyways, I think they look great. So I've got that done and now we're gonna go to our next step. Okay, we are going to sew the side seams on. I had already done one, just to make sure I have it right, because this is a different way of doing it. What you're going to do is take your side piece, make sure you have your center marks, make sure you have your lines, because you're going to sew right up against I mean, right up against it, because when you flip the bag, 
you want that to be tight for your interfacing, okay? So you definitely want to make sure you sew right up against your lines. So you're going to take your right side to the right side of this bag. You're going to center your bottom, okay? We're going to center. We're going to clip this together and we're going to sew just the bottom first at that seam allowance, okay? So we're going to clip that together, line it up nice and neat. And when you're gonna sew, you're gonna start at this corner point, back stitch, and then you're going to go to this next center point. Now she does say that you can take this and then clip it and stop at that point and pivot and go up. Um, I'm gonna try that because with the other one I didn't. I sewed the bottom and then back stitched and then I came up the side. Now it came out all right, but I'd like to follow her directions as much as I can to help you ladies out. So I'm gonna get a few more clips on this and then we're gonna take it to the sewing machine. And it's a good thing that we don't have the interfacing on the bottom, okay? So I'm just gonna clip this, square it up and then we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and we're gonna start it at this point. So to this point, pivot and come up to the side. All right, I'm gonna finish clipping and then I'll meet you at the sewing machine. Okay, we're starting at a different angle. So hopefully you can see this because the way I have to hold the bag. So be patient. Again, we are using a five stitch length we're going to start in this corner to this corner and then pivot and make sure you sew real close to the interfacing. Oh, all right. So we're going to try to put it in. It's my clumsy hands. I do apologize. We'll get there. Okay. Well, it's like wrestling a bear, which I've never done, so I would imagine it's like this. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to move that clip out of the way just a little bit. I want to keep that going. I hope you can see this. Okay, and we're going to bring my needle down to that point. Nope. All right. Sorry. It just, it went off and I don't like that. Okay. It's already because I had the other side sewed, so. Even with a cylinder arm, I guess you have to maneuver things. Okay, again, I hope you can see this. I'm gonna set it back there. All right, hold threads. And again, you wanna sew real close to the interfacing. Do a couple of stitches. And make sure you're on that point. Okay. This is going to be the tricky part, is to pivot. I still haven't decided if I'm going to pivot or not. I might just sew all the way to the edge like I did the other one. Yep. Yeah. 
Nope. Okay, we're going to pivot. Lift up. Turn. Find your seam allowance. And so close to the interface seam again. Make sure you get your flap out of the way on this side. Don't sew your flap in there. Hold it out of the way as you can. Hold your pieces down as best you can. <laughs> this is where it comes in handy to have a third hand. Alright, I'm just going to get a couple more stitches here and then I can stand in place pretty good. There we go. Okay, and back stitch. Alright, we got that side on. Again, I hope you were able to see all that. Uh, I didn't get very close there. I might have to kind of went, but it did so. Just when I went around the corner, my stitch went off a little bit. Um, if all else fails, I can just run another stitch because this stayed real close. This did really good here. But now we we'll have to make sure it's really close there. All right, so I'm going to check that corner out. I'm going to flip it around and see how it looks. And uh, then we will sew on the other, other piece. Okay. Okay, we're taking that as a win. Now we clip the other side all the way down. Again, we're gonna sew from this, well, from the top, right close to the seam allowance, down to this point, and don't forget to back stitch. Okay. Slide that out of the way a little bit. Okay, we got her. So now we're going to take it back over to the table and see what our next step is. Okay, now that we sewed um, both sides on, 
We're going to take our double-sided tape, hopefully here, if I can find the beginning, and she said to turn the bag and then put it on. I don't know, I find it easier to, especially if I'm using double-sided tape, to put it on here, and then I'm just going to clip it in sections to the seam, and then I'll put a piece over the seam. But if you, if you put your tape close to the seam, it will fold down right on top of it. So I'm going to finish putting my tape around, and then I'll be right back with you. Okay, I have her turned out. Um, I think it came out really nice. Stitches look good. And I have my double-sided tape. And then what we're going to do now is just take off our tape, and we're going to fold it down to that line that she had you make on all your pieces okay so we're going to do that and then um, we're going to move on to doing the lining okay so we're going to work on our interior lining um, i already went ahead and i sewed on the uh, lining panel to the um, lining you know side and the uh, measurements are in the this machine you sew it right sides together, make sure you have your marking on the back because you're gonna need that to help fold this down. Um, then you're gonna top stitch on top of the lining and you're gonna do that for both pieces. You wanna find your center, okay? And then you get your uh, zipper overlay and I'm putting this little tag in there. I just, it looks really pretty today. You look really pretty today, I think that's cute. So I'm gonna go along and I'm gonna sew just the outer edge okay holding my thread so I can tie them back and then I'm um, uh, gonna cut this out you know you a lot of you've already done a lot of the lining so I'm just gonna bypass on some of this if you need more instructions I do have other videos out there but uh, I'm gonna just kind of talk you through just sew the outer edge first then we'll come back to the table and we'll cut that out and um, then we'll place our zipper because at the same time I'm gonna get my zipper pocket piece and um, you have your right side lining up and then you have your zipper up and then you're gonna baste on both sides. You bring this one up, okay, the right side to the back side of the zipper. And then I always, because of waterproof canvas being stiff, always stick a little piece of tape. I will remove that later. Then you're going to put your double-sided tape on top and then we'll fit it through there. So when I get all this done here, I'll come back and show you that. And then on the slip pocket with waterproof canvas, I learned this little trick from um, Kelly at Soful Creation. You take your long edge and you mark a half inch and then you put your double-sided tape on here, fold it on both sides, and then you fold it up. And then you'll put your little trim on there as I, I'll show you but you'll put your trim on there, and then once you sew this on the bag, you already have your side seam sewed up, so you don't have to turn it around. I think that is just so clever, so I wanted to show you that. So I'm gonna put my double-sided tape on this, I'm gonna sew all these down, and um, I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I sewed around the outside, and now we're going to clip in here, and be careful not to clip your Vinyl, make sure your scissors go underneath. Do that to the other side. Boy, that black and red is real pretty together. Okay. And slide that under. And then you're going to flip it over and trim it up to that, oops, up to the double sided tape. Try not to clip your vinyl. Again, you can speed through this if you already know how to do this. And then I'm gonna clip the other side. My scissors getting caught in the material in the back here.
Okay, so you shouldn't be able to see that through. I had tied off my threads. So we've got that. All right, and then the next step, like I said, is get your zipper prepared. Make sure your zipper pull is going to the left, if that's how you like it. We're going to take off the top tape backing and lay it down. Okay, and then I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to take my stitches and make it even. You know, you can try to find the center if you want and center your zipper. That would work too. But I'm going to eyeball it. Looks about right. And then flip it up. Line up your zipper in the center of that. Okay. All right. So we've got that one. And see with this laying down flat. I know a lot of you probably have dealt with that. We're trying to get that to lay flat. So get your zipper pull out of the way. And then this should just fall naturally right where it needs to land after you pull off that tape. Just kind of let it fall and then press it down gently. Okay. Okay. So now this way she has is in her pattern. She has you sew it the same way is as the back zipper pocket you want to pull this out and then stitch from here to here and then drop your pocket back down and stitch around well it is a drop in and i don't mind but i'm going to remove that bottom tape okay and i don't want to go around it now you can like i said the way she does it in the way i showed you earlier but i'm going to go back to my other way of, I know, um, of laying this flat, and then I'm going to cut this open. Again, you don't have to. If you just raise your zipper pocket up, stitch from here to here, lower your zipper pocket, and then stitch all the way around it. I want consistent stitches. So it doesn't bother me to do this. If it does you, then do it the other way. And I'm just going to, and then what I'll do is I'll just sew the edges all the way around. So. Because then I can go and I can open this up and have one piece here, one piece here, lay that down, and then I can continually sew. Okay. So I'm going to go to the sewing machine and do that and get that part done. But I explained those two ways of doing it. Um, this is how I choosing to do it. And then I'm going to sew my side seams up and then we'll go to the slip pocket. Okay, I got the zipper pocket all done. I sewed down my side seams. Again, I did it differently. So I sewed all the way around. I just, I like that better. All consistent. So my little zipper, boink. That looks really pretty. Okay, so now we're moving on to the slip pocket. Kind of the same thing. All right, you have, like I said, half inch on the long side. We're going to take off the back end of the tape, fold up to that line. Make sure you're still in camera view. <laughs> Sometimes I get carried away here. All right, and then you can roll that down if you want with your leather roller or whatever um, but this just makes such a nice slip pocket it's nice to learn new tricks okay continue with that all the way down and then what we're going to do is okay so there see how nice that makes that so then all you have to do is just bring it up and then we're going to go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to base that closed. Okay, so it doesn't wiggle around when I try to put the, uh, ran out of clips, um, when I try to put the trim on it. So I'm going to go over and base that real quick and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I have that basted. I did not sew the side seams yet because we're going to do that when we place it on our lining. So now I have um, the trim piece and... You're going to put a line down the center 
and you're going to take your piece here and just line it up right kind of center it so you have some extra on either side and you're going to line it right up underneath that line press that down take off the other piece of backing and then you're going to fold it down to meet the other side okay i do it like that of course it didn't stay because it doesn't have tape on it but it gives me a line to use okay and i'm going to press that down and it's not quite where i want it there we go all right this is real thick material but it's great you can clip that to hold that in place i refilled my clips and then we're going to top stitch along there Okay, so then take it to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch right along there. Okay, so you want to find your center. I trimmed off my extra um, and I put a little piece of, guess what, double sided tape um, to hold it in place after I place it in the center here. Okay. And then press that down and then we're going to go and we're going to sew around the whole thing all right so there we go so i'll be right back with you on that okay so i have that sewed on there you can put a couple of rivets here if you'd like um there's a slip pocket i took the uh, tape off of there i think that looks really nice now the reason why i really didn't show you a lot of the sewing on this is because I have done it. A lot of you ladies know how to do it. I don't want to waste your time. I know you can go through it and, uh, you know, speed through it if you want. But um, uh, I've been showing you the tricks of what I know. And then, um, like I said, we mostly, all of us have done a lining or two. But the most important one I really want to show you step by step is when we do this divider pocket. Okay, so that's going to be our next step. I'm going to get all the pieces together and I'll be right back with you. Okay, the pieces you're going to need are your L and your M and then your two divider pockets Q. All right, and you're going to take your L piece, which is the shorter piece, and we're going to take both of these and clip them on both ends and you're gonna sew them on at the seam allowance. Okay, then we're gonna flip them up and we're gonna top stitch them. Do that, and I will. Okay, this is the simple part of it. All right. And then I cut my zipper, I have my zipper tape, but I always cut it longer because I want to be able to make that mark and then we can cut it off and it won't show. And you can trim up your zipper, but I always I always make my zipper a little longer just for that reason. And so you can either line it up at the edge or have a little room to hang it over like that. But we're not doing that yet. So I'm gonna take it over the sewing machine, sew the little panels on at the seam allowance, flip it up, and then we're gonna to top stitch it, okay? So I'll be right back. Okay, so we have both of those sewed on there and top stitched. So now we're going to take our zipper and we're going to lay it face down and clip it in place. Okay, so right side down. All right. And then we're going to take our piece M right side down and line up your pieces here and clip it to the zipper making kind of a zipper sandwich okay and then we're going to take it to the sewing machine and we're going to sew it at the seam allowance okay so i'll meet you over there okay so my stitches for the sewing part is at a five and when i flip over to do the top stitching I will change them over to a six. I put my plate back on and my narrow foot back on. 
And we're gonna sew this at the seam allowance. Again, make sure they're all lined up. There, let me see, nope. I'm gonna bring that over just a hair more. Oops. Okay. Clip those together. Make sure your zipper tape stays up there. Okay, sorry about that. And there. Zipper tape. Okay, again, we're gonna sew it at the seam allowance, holding your threads. And here we go. Got a little bit out of the way. Back stitch. Okay, we're going to do a lot of it right here. So we're gonna trim our threads. Okay, so then what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip this up, pull your zipper tape. We're going to finger press, hopefully. Okay, and you wanna lay this down and we're gonna to top stitch. Now I'm gonna add a couple of clips to keep it in place. to make sure that it all lines up. Do that finger press. Keep it lined up. All righty. This material is hard to do a finger press on it, but we'll get her. And then we're gonna top stitch along this edge, and that's when we're gonna change our stitch length. Okay. Alrighty, so we've got that done. Clip our threads. Remove your clips if you put any in there. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're going to take this side and we're gonna bring it up to the other side of the zipper tape. Clip it in place. Okay, and then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna bring the other side, do the same thing. Bring it up to the top of the back of the zipper and clip it into place. And again, we're going to sew at the seam allowance. Okay, so both sides like that. Back stitch.
Okay, and this is why you don't want to put your zipper on and you need that little mark because now what? Well, now we're going to open up the zipper. Turn our pocket inside or inside out, right side, and pull it like that. Pretty cool. Get it all straightened out. Okay, and then again, we're going to finger press. Oh, that one didn't go all the way. There we go. Finger press. Gonna hold it with a clip. And then we're gonna top stitch that part. Okay. Kind of cool. Hmm. do that and clip that Okay, so now I'm going to put my, I think the next step is put our zipper on. So we'll go back over to the table, take your clips out, trim your threads, and there we go. We have a, a divided pocket. Cool, huh? Yeah. All right, so let's go over to the table and see what our next step is. Okay, so now this is where we install our zipper, and then I trimmed off the edges, and you know, notice that mine's closed. What I do is I install the zipper and run it all the way through to close it. Because when we sew, it's easier if it's closed. So run it all the way through and then open up your end and put your zipper back on and you'll get both your ends closed, okay? Another little trick, I learned that from Kasaya. So um, that's a cool little trick because sometimes when these are open, you know it's hard to sew. And then trim off, okay? And then we're gonna lay it like this and the trick I learned from making this other bag is I'm gonna clip my zipper straight like that, okay? Because we're gonna be sewing over this. So I'm gonna bring it in, oh, about an inch, and clip it right underneath it so it will hold your zipper straight. It might move, as you can see, but you wanna keep this part as straight as you possibly can. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place it right at that seam, right here, that seam, right align the side seam, okay? And we're gonna clip it in place. So right at that seam and clip it into place. And then we're gonna sew it at the seam allowance all the way down. Sorry, I gotta get a better angle on this. There we go. Okay. Okay. So. Okay, so we've got that lined up. Make sure your zipper is straight as straight as you can possibly get it. This is gonna be the tricky part because now what we're gonna do is then we're gonna put the other side panel on, line them up, and then we're gonna sew all the way down. All right, um, you might need a hump jumper. What I've done is I just walked my sewing machine needle over it, okay? So now we're gonna clip both those sides together Keeping that, you know what, I and I can't lower it anymore. It'll be hanging down there. Okay, well, this is what she says to do. So this is what we're going to do. 
All right, I'm gonna just clip those together. Okay, and then we're gonna sew at the seam allowance. So I'll meet you back over at the sewing machine. Okay, being that the uh, seam allowance is uh, the same all the way down, no tapering in, I'm going to sew from the bottom and see how that works going up that big hump. All right, so I'm gonna try sewing at the bottom. Stitches are at five, don't forget to back stitch. Ever a day, <laughs> I never drop the clips. All right, we're starting to come up to the thickness here, and because there's a lot of thickness there, I am going to just walk it over and I might have to push and pull my thing through a little bit as it goes because with a cylinder arm you can throw your machine out of timing with the thickness so just take your time pull as you go Okay, so we got through that. Oh, there we go. Just gave it a little extra thread. <laughs> okay, yeah, to me that worked better, so I had some more material to kind of help it pull through, okay? All right, so we've got that on there. And now we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Um, okay, so now we're gonna to try to hold our zipper. I don't say this is a perfect idea. I don't know another way because I look at this and it's still kind of squished it, but I think we'll be okay. So now we're gonna take the other side with a zipper pocket we're going to line it up the same way, right underneath that seam. You want it to be at the same place as the other side, so wherever you lined it up at, okay? Yeah, it kind of moved up a little bit. That's okay. All right, so we'll just get that lined up. Line up your bottom. Clip it all the way down. Okay. And then we're gonna add, now it's gonna pull. It's okay if it looks like that, like it's pulling, that's fine. Just line up your pieces, okay? Cause it's supposed to do that. So we're gonna clip that. I'm gonna sew from the bottom again. Line that up. Okay. Just clip that all along down there till you get to the bottom. All right, I'm off a little bit, but that's probably because of the hump. It'll all work out in the end. Mm. Okay, so do your stitch allowance and back stitch. the tricky part. Yeah, I 
until it wants to Through the hard part. All right. Okay, that's how you do the divider pocket. Okay, there we go. Take the clip off. All right, so now we have our <laughs> a divider pocket. Okay, so now we're gonna take it back over the table and figure out what our next step is. Okay, now that we have that done, we are going to sew our bottom first at the seam allowance, and then we're going to turn and we're gonna box our corners at the seam allowance, and then it's gonna be time to put the double-sided tape fold this down and put our interior lining into our bag. So I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. Okay. So it at the seam allowance, get that lined up, back stitch. our threads and we're going to box our corners and you can do the nesting if you want that might be a little harder take your time because of that divider pocket that's in there but just line it up I don't think nesting is going to work very well so I'm going to try to open up my seams no no I'll just go nesting this way. There we go. Okay. And then line that up. Do that to both sides. Again, it's a little bit tricky because of the, I want to make sure that goes that way, because of that divider pocket, but you, you can get it. Okay, just kind of push it out of the way a little bit and trying to get that to go the same way. There we go. Bring that up. Okay, clip that down, pull that out. All right. Well, it might be better to do it without my table sometimes. So hopefully you can see this. But if not, I'll basically we're just gonna sew across. So I'm gonna just move, take you off camera and if you sew at the stitching, um, seam allowance hello at the seam allowance take your time and uh, sew across and then sometimes I do put a second a row of stitches right next to it just to give it more strength so if you want to do that you can do that as well and then I'll meet you back at the table okay and uh, go from there okay so we boxed our corners and I did sew a second st uh, stitch line and then I trimmed it um, it's time to put the double-sided tape around your bag. Also, this is where you want to put your uh, base inside your bag. Um, so what I did is I have some still some markings down in here for center. I centered this. I put it in there. Um, I had to cut off a little bit on each side. So now we're going to take this and you can put glue and or tape 
And so we're gonna put this in the bag. We're getting so close to having this beautiful thing done. I'm so excited. Oh, so excited. And I covered every inch. I used half inch, quarter inch, whatever it took to make sure every inch of this base, okay, just like you would with the glue. And I might go end up going off camera. I apologize, but you kind of get the gist of what we have to do. So I'm going to take it back in there, curl it up, line it up with that seam allow or the marking. Gently press it there. Make sure. And then just press it down. Okay. There we go. Press that all in there to get that nice and tight. Oh yeah, that looks good. Okay, and so now we are gonna take the double-sided tape and fold to that line. And you can center that with that center mark there if you had that on there. Kinda helps so you know that you're doing and we're just gonna tape this all the way around to that line. And then we're gonna take our little roller and roll it flat. Okay, take this one off. Open up your seams, fold your seam down to that line. There we go. Ooh, this is exciting. All right. And start creasing that. Come back to the center like I like to do. Make sure that's centered there. Boy, I like that hyper stick from Moac. It is awesome stuff. Okay. Okay, come to our seam, open it up, fold it down. Okay, so now we've got that, a little roller, and roll around it, really push that down. You kind of get the gist of it. And then I would take that one um, tool. It's a tool that I use to do uh, key fobs. And it has a rubber covering over the metal part. And that really helps squish this down. Really helps squish this down. So I'm gonna take it, and it might have to do it as we sew, I don't know. But squish that down. Let's help flatten that out again. You see it has rubber covers on it so it doesn't scratch. All right, and then you want your zipper pocket in the back. And we're gonna put it in there. Make sure your bottom goes down. Push it in. And then we're gonna start lining it up. Again, I have my little mark here and I still have a mark here. So I'm going to make sure that that lines up with my center and start clipping around. Okay, put a few clips here and then we're going to have to, you know, maneuver it a little bit, but you get the idea. Look how pretty that's becoming. Let's get this down in there. Okay. Oh, and then here's my center again. Here's my center here line it up you want it just a hair just not even a hair the lining inside so you don't see okay so I'm going to clip around all that and again you can do the same thing with your sides you know you can take your tool again and mash that down find your center here and bring it on up and clip around Okay, and then I'll be back with you. We'll probably be over at the sewing machine. So I'm gonna work with this a little bit. Alrighty. 
All right, here we go. Um, I got it all clipped in, fits really nice. I took my pliers again and mashed down the seams in the corner. I took my plate off and uh, we're just gonna get sewing. I'm gonna pull my threads through, try to get them through up in the crack here. All right, so here we go. not going to believe it. I ran out of bobbin. Okay, note to self, make sure bobbin is full. And I meant to, I thought about it. Um, so what I did is I just backed out a few stitches to make my sti uh, th uh, threads longer and filled my bobbin and reclipped it real quick. Thank goodness it just, it didn't get to that corner. So we will just hold our threads and give me a minute to Bring my needle down to that stitch. It takes a minute because I can't get that up high enough. So I'll bring it down to the last stitch that I did. Line her up. Hold the new threads again. And we'll just take off from there. I'm going to hold the threads again for a little longer because I only did two stitches. And make sure that you hold, now that I can tell you, when you reach in here for where that um, divider pocket is, make sure you push that kind of out of the way as well. Okay? So I apologize. This stuff happens. I just got to try to find the threads now. I don't know where they went to. <laughs> Sorry. I got all tucked up underneath here somehow. I got the one. Oh, there it is. Oh, dog wants to go out. <laughs> okay, and we'll just keep her lined up and there we go. My husband's gonna let her out. I shouldn't be off too much of this because I lined up my stitches. Okay, not too shabby. Lined up really good. 
So I'm lucky. Yeah, please check your bobbin. All right. So I'm going to leave my long threads. I'm going to go back to the table and tie them off. And we are just about done with this bag. Last thing for me to do is put my uh, front clasp on. Okay, she's done. I got my uh, um, magnetic snap on. I added my chain. Uh, the handle on this is kind of cool. It uh, literally kind of pulls it and flattens it out, but I think the connectors worked out great. And then this is the back. Okay, and our sides. And then we're going to open it up, and inside it's beautiful. I hope you can see it. With the zipper pocket, and then the divider pocket, and then our slip pocket, and it fits. It just fits so nice. If you can see how nice that bottom just fits in there. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them in the description box below. And if you know anybody who would like to purchase this bag, please go to my website at bagsbybeckymack.com. I thank you and have a great day. Thank you.